Uh, one of the big challenges in IoT is obviously the scale. The scale is very different than enterprise IT. You're talking about orders of magnitude. For some companies, that could mean hundreds of thousands of devices. For others, millions. Think about the number of uh, uh, controllers in cars, ECUs in cars. When we have 10 million semi-autonomous driving vehicles, each with 20 or 30 ECUs, and needing to maintain and keep them secure, it's going to be difficult to do. Same thing with smart cities, smart meters, smart factories. So we're going to talk today about how Makana is working with Intel to scale that and simplify the management of security. So let's talk about cyber, cyber attacks. It's a very expensive uh, uh, business impact for, uh, for us, right? The White House, the economic advisors, estimate that the cost of cyber attacks is about 57 to 109 billion dollars per year. That's quite a bit. For some of the attacks, like NotPetya, companies like Maersk and FedEx each uh, experience more than 300 million dollars in damages from those, uh, from those attacks. Saudi Aramco, which was attacked in one of their oil refineries, one of their control centers, had to replace 35,000 computers that cost them over a billion dollars. The, the other big attack, WannaCry, the estimates of that is, are, are north of $4 billion. So for businesses considering managing connected devices, this can be very, very expensive. When you look at critical infrastructure today, that too is probably the most vulnerable area. You're talking about very legacy, older devices in our electric grids, in our factories, in our cities and uh, being able to protect them is quite complicated. When you think about the attacks happening, and actually while we're here at RSA as you walk around the floor, the vast majority of approaches to security have to do with network security, threat detection, and, uh, and firewalls. And as we can see from many of the attacks, it's not really working. We're able to track and do the analysis to figure out how the hackers came in. But the challenge really is that the devices themselves aren't very secure. We tend to rely on network security, IDS, IPS, uh, firewalls, air gaps, but the hackers are actually physically penetrating enclosures because the IoT devices are, are, uh, are, are more easily accessible. And they're also uh, able to uh, actually get into a network through the, the, uh, uh, the most vulnerable device. So when it comes to actually protecting the devices, we think you have to implement stronger device security. Now that can be difficult. So what do I de mean by device security? Device security is what you use to actually protect the device. So there are things like cryptography, authentication, encryption, protecting the data and the device itself on the device. So not relying on the network per se, but actually making sure that the device can defend itself. Can it authenticate into a network securely? Can it encrypt traffic? Can it encrypt the traffic uh, or the data on the device itself? Can you actually make sure that the operating system, the kernel, the applications, the device is booted up all correctly, and what you think is on the device is actually on the device, or even the identity. How do you know whether the device that you're connecting to is actually the device you think you're connecting to? We like to say at Makana, you can't trust the data unless you can trust the device. And in spite of an extraordinary amount of different security technologies, the reality is we actually use a lot of inference in what we, uh, uh, to, make, to understand security vulnerabilities. With Makana and Intel, what we're doing is looking at actually protecting the devices. So what that means is implementing a very strong form of protection within the device. Incorporating that, integrating it into the chip within software running on the chip. And with that, you're able to ensure that the device itself can communicate securely. This could be from a sensor or a gateway or a server class robot or system but the security and the device security is very important for them. How do we do that? Well, a couple ways. One is we have software 
that's implemented on the device. In Wakana's case, we call it TrustPoint. And TrustPoint can be incorporated, really compiled into and incorporated into the application on the device. So if you've built a, a, uh, uh, an IoT device, maybe a telematics device, and it's built on an Intel chipset, uh, you're able to use Mokana to actually deploy your application in a secure manner. We integrate directly with your application to provide the security, to provide things like authentication and also uh, identity and key management as well as uh, encryption for the data and communications. Now, that's all fine and well, but how do you actually manage that? Right, and this is where it becomes a challenge. We have introduced uh, Makana Trust Center to work with TrustPoint, and this is the platform that allows you to manage the endpoint or the device security. So doing things like refreshing certificates or um, uh, rotating keys to make sure it has a secure identity or updating the firmware can all be done securely and managed through a console. And this is connected to back-end business systems. That could be your certificate authority, your domain controllers, your business systems, even SAP for the business logic. So what it allows you to do is actually automate the provisioning of security on the device, the IoT device, at scale. So this scales into the millions of, of, uh, of devices. Today, that process is very manual. And what, uh, what we're doing is working with Intel to actually scale that. So we have a whole dashboard that you're able to use to manage the devices and the security on the devices. Um, with Intel, we've partnered with them to integrate Intel Secure Device Onboard with Mokana Trust Center. And what this does is it allows you to have zero touch provisioning of identities to the device. And that integrates with Makana, who can then provision the digital certificates and the firmware updates. So those three things, those three basic things that are very important to actually creating a device, deploying a, a, a secure identity, deploying a digital certificate that can be used so it can communicate securely, and then enabling that device to be securely updated and managed are very difficult and manual to do today. So working with Makana, Intel uh, or Intel and Mokana are able to simplify that. So here's an example of a device. Let's say you've created an IoT device. It has a small client on it, Intel SDO client. That can communicate up to the Intel SDO cloud, confirm that it, it is actually a valid device, maybe using an Intel EPID ID built into it, so that ID is a very secure form of, uh, of identification. It confirms it, deploys that, and then it returns a unique ID as well as a, uh, a couple of simple binary clients from Mokana that then can automate the provisioning of a certificate. So this would connect out automatically to Trust Center, hit your CA, DigiCert, Global Sign, whoever it is, Microsoft, and return that secure digital certificate to the device. Once it's on there, it can actually use the update client to then download the firmware update. So you're talking about being able to ship a device that has really no software, intellectual property on it. And then with this process, zero touch, you turn on the device, it goes in, authenticates, confirms its identity, gets a digital certificate, and downloads the first firmware update, which is the application itself. Once that's done, this device can now do what it's supposed to do. So we're doing this for customers such as uh, oil and gas facilities where they need to uh, enable and deploy uh, large uh, valves in pipelines and refineries where there's not access to technicians to do the implementations. Uh, we're also able to support multi-factor verification and the updates and code signing. So let me give you some examples of what we do. So I was talking about the oil and gas company. So with this company, they have uh, valves, so very large valves that they put in the refineries and they monitor those. And, um, and they want to deploy them in not only their refineries, but in gas pipelines all over the world. So these devices have SIM cards uh, or SIM uh, cellular connectivity built into them. So they ship them out into the field. 
they connect up to a cellular network, and then they're able to actually uh, register, uh, um, get ide an identity, get a digital certificate, and also get a firmware update out in the field. What it does is it simplifies and, and automates the whole process. The reason that's important is because they can eliminate really the risks of using a, uh, a human, a field technician who may have access to many of the public keys uh, or many of the, the keys because they're not really touching the device. Another one of our partners, Verizon, has worked with Mokama to deploy our security in their thing space IoT clients so that any device connecting to the thing space, the Verizon's IoT network, can have strong security in the device, and they can actually manage that security remotely through the ThingSpace cloud. And also in the healthcare field. So this is a, a, a relatively big issue. There are many legacy devices out there in the world. About 85% of connected devices out there are older devices. So think of all of the equipment in electric grids, in substations, in factories, um, they're all running very old code, including healthcare facilities. So when the WannaCry virus hit, that was able to take over a lot of Windows-based systems that had very, very uh, old operating systems, ones that weren't supported anymore, no longer supported through extended support, built on Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Vista, etc. What we're able to do with Trust Center is deploy clients on there that allow them to simply manage the security on those devices. So some of the identity, the credentials on the device, without actually touching the application. So being able to rotate the keys and the identity allows them to have a more secure system without actually touching the application, which was important to them uh, because we were able to do that without triggering an FDA recertification. So a very simple way to, to, uh, uh, to fix a very big problem. Uh, we work with a number of large manufacturers that deploy Mokana in their products. So companies like GE and Siemens and Bosch and Emerson, uh, many defense contractors, where they're using our software to provide all of the secure cryptography within their devices. So, and we're handling uh, that for about 100 million devices today. Why do customers use us? One is we're simple, scalable, and secure. So all of our software is based on non-open source technology. Um, we're, uh, we have highly compliant systems. We're also very simple and easy to use. The orchestration, again, enables full zero-touch provisioning of uh, security on devices. And if you want to check it out for yourself, we have a great demo over there that goes over how you can actually manage security on devices uh, and change them and, uh, and we'll show you how we can actually do that, maintain the security and, and do uh, uh, handle secure software updates over there with Intel SDO and Mokana. So that is a bit about Mokana. Any questions for us? Okay, well thank you very much. Be sure to come and see us over here at our, uh, at our booth and we'd love to talk to you about device security. Thank you very much.